Welcome back everybody. We're going to go back into this BMW battery. Now this large BMW battery came on a crate with three large modules. I've taken apart one of the modules and brought the individual cell groups over here on my table. Now these things are heavy and they need to be rewired into 48 volts. Now I can't put them on my tower of power over here behind me anymore because that thing's full. So I went to the recycler and I picked up this. Now this is a big server cabinet and best part, it's on wheels. So let's get into this and see what we need to do to make it work. Hi everybody, I'm David and welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. This video, we're gonna talk about this server cabinet and what we need to do to make it work as a battery cabinet. Now here it is, it's pretty tall. Looks like it's APC and up there it says infrastructure, cool. It's got this door on it. If we turn that, whoa, awesome. So I get to open it up. Now it looks like this display is not attached to anything. We have some old rails here that we'll be taking out. Some old rails down here. Now for some reason, server racks are listed in a unit of height called U, and this is a 42U. Now that was something new that I learned. I didn't know that. Now if we go in the back, we can see we have some power strips. And over on this side as well, we have some power strips from APC. Now these things have some big twist lock plugs on them. Now when I brought this home in my van and opened the door, I noticed a couple of screws on the bottom were loose. And so I'd like to go through this whole thing top to bottom, make sure that everything's tight. I wanna remove anything that's not necessary and come up with a plan for the shelves. We're not loading this cabinet up with battery, so I'll let you know that right away if you want to click off the video. But this is what I've got because that tower is full and all of these batteries need to go somewhere and I don't want to just throw them on the floor. <laughs> so I want to make sure that this is prepared and ready to receive the battery modules once I add the BMSs and have them ready to go as 48 volt. Let's take this door off and it looks like this pin, maybe I just lift it up. Yeah, okay. Now let's move over to the side. And I think I pulled down on these. Yep. Well, that looks pretty cool without the front door or the sides on. Now these power strips, I think they just pop out if I give them a little yank. If I push up from the bottom, yeah. Yep, right there, good. So that's all, just a keyhole. Look these up and I think they call them slide nuts or spring nuts. So let's see if we can't get this off. Oop. Yeah, so it's just a, a nut on there with a zinc coating. but I don't know the official name for it. It's the thing with all the holes in it to screw your shelves to, or your servers to, I guess. It looks like it can slide more to the rear. So this space here in the rear, I think this is just for wireway. I'd like to make the shelves as large as possible. So I think I'm gonna loosen these up and slide them more to the back, and that way the shelves can be bigger. I'm just gonna be custom making my shelves for this unit, so I don't really care to make it fit a certain server dimension. Looks like these Allen head screws are a five millimeter. On the back side of the rail, you can see it's a welded nut on the, a vertical upright. So let's see if we can get it to the back. There we go. The shelf distance will be defined from this front edge here to the back edge over there. And then this rear cavity will be for wires. And I was trying to think if I could move this forward and get a little bit more distance. So I put the door back on just to check. And it looks like there is plenty of clearance here. Now it was way back here. And look at all this. We're gaining like an extra three inches of shelf space. So let's push it back and make it a little bit flush here. And then I realize that there's a couple of holes and that doesn't exactly line up. And if I make it line up like that one, 
that's probably an alignment hole to keep this rail plumb, or at least, uh, if not plumb, at least uh, parallel with this one in the back, the support. Here's just a centering tool. Get that in there, and well, let's find out how much space we've gained. When I first brought this home, it was 29 inches from back to front, and now it's 31 and a half. So we got an extra two and a half inches of depth for the shelf, great. All right, so it looks like we still have six and a quarter inches for wires, which is tons of space for wires. Uh, you know, this is not gonna be a server rack anymore, so we're not gonna have bundles of hundreds of ethernet stuff. I don't know, I've only seen pictures. <laughs> I'm not an IT specialist here, so. All the dimensions are even, both at the top and the bottom. Next, I'm gonna go through and uh, f do a final torque on these just by hand, uh, so I'm not using the drill on them. Make sure they're tight. And then I'm gonna go through and any other screws that I can find, I'm gonna tighten down. There's two pieces of steel on the bottom that they looked a little bit high. Put it over here, they're a little bit high. Teetering right there. But let me go ahead and flip them and I think that will make them sit just low enough so that they're flush with the front and back support. And I like the idea that this is completely flush now, right across the surface from back all the way to the front, completely flush. So I scabbed on a couple of just random pieces of steel that I had. I have some scrap steel in my backyard and I'm gonna cut a big rectangle to go across this entire floor and sit down on it and then these will support that piece of steel and I'll have a floor for the cabinet. All right, I have a sheet of steel here and I'm gonna cut this to make a floor. Not actually sure how thick it is. So maybe 3 16 Okay, so pretty thick, pretty heavy. It has a couple of holes in there that I won't need. I just put this straight edge on a mark that I drew. So I've got my big grinder out and put this on grinding setting. So there's over here weld and grind. So I'm gonna put that down to grind and see if that works for me. Look at that, that's awesome. And we've got our first battery on it. Well, I hope this will be a nice home for the BMW batteries. Now this piece on the floor took an hour to cut and sand. It's 3 16 and I don't have a plasma cutter. I have to build eight more shells inside the server rack to store all the batteries. Now my current plan is to take this. It's three quarter inch angle iron, eighth inch thick. I'll cut it to length and drill holes where the holes in these vertical uh, upright supports are. And that way I can uh, bolt it in place and then put a piece of plywood across. Uh, now I like the idea of plywood because it's fast, I have some spare, and it's non-conductive. So if I drop a wire on it, at least I know I'm not going to short it out. But I can get my hands on more of this steel if it's a better option, but it's then conductive. So I'm sure some of you will suggest, well, get the steel, but then composite it up with some kind of, I don't know, epoxy layer or something. Uh, you guys come up with all kinds of creative ideas. Uh, and I appreciate that, but we're also trying to keep this uh, DIY friendly and budget and, <laughs> uh, you know, a little bit more realistic. So thank you everybody very much for watching. If you have any other ideas or suggestions, uh, maybe the angle iron is not a good idea. Uh, let me know in the comments below. For anybody uh, looking for a used server rack, 
Uh, my own personal experience was that I saw several available online by searching Facebook Marketplace as well as Craigslist. Server racks or IT racks or server cabinets and eventually I found one that worked. I paid $75 for this from a recycler. Well, thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you.